Hey, a pleasant good day, everyone. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be the first edition of NHL Playoff Hype. Get hyped for those NHL Playoffs. As in this video, we're going to react to the first weekend of the NHL Playoffs that was very full of hype, energy, and vigor when there was everything but one game went to overtime, which was a one-goal decided game in the beautiful Battle of Florida that took place that was actually a high scoring tilt in that first game of the Battle of Florida yesterday. So let's get right into this electric weekend. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the like button to keep the channel going. Keep all this great content going and subscribe over at Nitty Gritty, Flyers Nitty Gritty, and Steel Flyers as well. We really appreciate it. The first game, as I said, every game but one went to OT. Uh, that Capitals and Bruins game was a very electric um, game between the Caps and Bruins that Tom Wilson was able to score on at the beginning on the give-and-go. Jake DeBrusque on the unfortunate play for Vitek Vanacek that he unfortunately got injured on, was able to score on that quick shot off of the draw. And then Vanacek unfortunately went down, and that became the first storyline. There's always some great storylines of NHL playoffs. The first became the veteran that only played four games this year. Craig Anderson comes in and steps up and actually plays a good game. You could see how gassed he was at the end of regulation, and is a big reason the Capitals are able to win the game. Another reason they ruined the game is Brandon Dillon on a crazy goal that looked like Ovechkin got it at first, and he ended up not hitting it. I think it hit Luzon's stick for the Bruins in front of the net, one of their defensemen there, where Mantha and Ovi ended up getting the assist. Then Nick Ritchie was able to pot the tying goal for the Bruins until in OT. It looked like Oshie in his first game back, since he was banged up at the end of the season, was able to score the game winner. But then it was actually Nick Dow deflected it, who is like TJ Oshie said in his post-game interview, a hell of a player that does a lot of good things in their bottom six for him. He earned that goal, and he was able to get the winning goal. So the Capitals were able to get a hard-fought OT win in the first game against the Boston Bruins led on the back of a great just overall performance by their team. They outshot them 32-26. to 26. And also Ovechkin coming back, Oshie coming back, both of them look very good. Ovi, of course, played in the final game of the season, but not much prior to that. So all of those guys look very good. The Capitals look very good. And even with Craig Anderson in that, he actually looked really solid as well. Let in one goal, he would probably want back potentially. But he looked pretty solid and actually kept them in the game, really battled. And if they have to go to him, he is a veteran that's been on playoff runs before. They have a very fortif or very fortified defense. So they definitely are set if they do have to go with the veteran until Sam Sonos they were coming to Vanacek, um, still banged up. But that was a great first game to start the playoffs with as we now can move into the next game, which was the Islanders versus Pittsburgh which also ended up going to overtime. This was a great battle, a better um, goaltender matchup in this one. I believe they went with Sorokin in this game since Farley, I would assume, was not able to go. Otherwise, it seemed like all things would have pointed to uh, Varlamov. But Sorokin actually looked good in this game and made a lot of saves. Tristan Yari was actually the goaltender that with a couple of those goals there, the Palmieri goal far out on the face, or far out on the wrist shot, excuse me, and the Gene Gabriel Paggio and the Brock Nelson goal that went in between his section here. He would all want back, so I think he played an off game where Sorokin actually looked solid. His team was able to get the win 4-3, to three, led off of the backs of two goals by Kyle Palmieri. He talked about leading into the playoffs when I watched his interview on NHL Network, just being disappointed with himself in his play with the Islanders in the regular season after coming over from the Devils. Well, he should definitely be pleased. He's the star of that game that was able to along with um, a good game by Ilya Soroka. Not a perfect game, but a good game, able to carry his team over the hump to be able to get that win and get the OT win, which was scored, of course, by Kyle Palmieri on a very difficult puck that was rolling that he was able to get over there. That was not on Yari. That was a very good play by Kyle Palmieri to be able to win the game. So that's a recap for the second game, the 4-3 win of the Islanders over the Penguins. And we had what I think was the most interesting nothing-nothing game in the history of hockey. You had a lot of physicality. You had a lot of great scoring chances in the Wild and Golden Knights game. But Cam Talbot and Marc-Andre Fleury were just up for every single task on every single shot until literally just a deflection of puck that ended up going off of Alex Martinez on a shot by Joel Erickson Eck when the pass was actually intended for Felino in front of the net that Greenway sent in front to get the secondary assist. He intended it for Felino. It went off of him and then ended up going to Erickson Eck. And then Erickson Eck shot it. And I believe it was Alex Martinez, if I remember correctly, in front. Ended up deflecting off of him and then flew through 
flurry. Otherwise, he probably would have saved that, and who knows how long that game would have went, and nothing, nothing. That was literally the equivalency of a pitcher's duel. Those goalies were just locked in. Cam Tavel was locked in. His glove side was ridiculous. Flurry's glove side was ridiculous. Those guys were making glove saves left and right. That was a very fun goalie battle to watch. That the Wild were able to come out on top and still have Vegas's number. You can never look at, I always have the mantra of, can't use the whole regular season. This team has their number going into the playoffs because when it's a series, usually the better, more fortified team, which is Vegas, prevails. But in the first game, it wasn't the case. Jarl Erks and Eck was able to score on a nice, fortunate bounce that he was able to get in front and get past Flurry. Otherwise, it looked like nothing was getting past Flurry or Cam Talbot in that battle of goaltenders. And then for the last game of the playoffs, since we recapped the 3-2 Capitals OT win on the goal by Nick Dowd already, we recapped the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins loss to the Islanders in overtime on the two-goal game, the great game by Kyle Palmieri, ever he was displeased in his regular season performance for the Islanders. And then we recap the Joel Erickson Eck goal off of, I believe it was Martinez, like I said, in front of the net, in the great goalie battle of Cam Talbot and Marc-Andre Fleury in game one there. Then you had the opposite in the Battle of Florida. Two goalies in Bobrovsky who actually had, had kind of settled himself into the season this year as the season went on. I'm trying to think of the right word, phrase to put that. I think that's a good way to put it. He kind of settled himself down. And had a fairly solid season. And then Vasilevsky one of the best goalies. Really is the best goalie on the planet. This year you could definitely say that Vezina goes to Flurry because of his performance. But overall, in the grand scheme of the last couple of years, Vazzy just has been the best goalie on the planet. Hellbuck obviously won the Vezina the one year, but I would say in the grand scheme of the last four years, Vazzy's definitely been the best goalie on the planet. It didn't shake out that well in this game, though. It was a 5-4 win. It was a great battle of offenses, which both of the Florida teams also have, but you would just think the goaltending would prevail in the first game of the playoffs. Blake Coleman had different ideas. He started it off with a backhander that went through the uh, section here of Sergei Bobrovsky. He would probably want that one back, but that's a tough play on a backhander. I saw a lot of people on social media really blame him for that goal. I'm not sure entirely how much that one's on him. The Barkov goal was a slap shot on the pallet play. Vazzy didn't have much of a chance with that. The Brahegi goal, Vazzy didn't have much of a chance, and that was a great setup in the slot by Andre Barkov. After scoring a goal, he sets up Carter Brahegi in the slot for a very nice goal there. And then the man, the myth, the legend, he didn't even play a whole regular season game. Who says you need to play games to stay sharp? Nikita Kucherov comes in and pots two goals, one on the power play. He was able to get the fortuitous um, play because of a broken stick on the Panthers there and then be able to get open on the assist from Hedman in front. And then Victor Hedman again on the power play gets an assist to Nikita Kucherov as he's able to slap one home again, which is then why Nikita Kucherov actually on the game tying goal for Braden Point was able to get the assist to him that made it 4-4 four to four later in the game because Bobrovsky got fooled since it went across to Kucherov. It looked like, obviously, you're anticipating him slapping it since he did it the rest of the plays. He didn't do it that play. He decided to pass it across, and then Braden Point had a wide-open net to slam it into for the tie that, because they had to come back in that point, was because of a previous Jonathan Huberto goal that ended up going through the five hole which seemed by accident on Vasilevsky as David Savar got back it seemed like he wanted to do a different move there and then a fortuitous rebound to Owen Tibbet that made it four to three before Braden Point got that tying goal because Sergei Bobrovsky was completely fooled he anticipated Kucherov going for the hat trick on the one timer I mean why not he did it two other times you don't have any other film to go off of him for this year he didn't even play in the whole regular season and is coming in, like I said in the series preview, will probably play at least as a B-plus player. Kucherov played like the full extension of himself, honestly, in that game. That was a huge uh, performance by him in the first game. He's clearly the star of that game, along with Braden Point, that got them over the hump to be able to get that 5-4 win. And over time, if it wasn't for Braden Point scoring the tying goal and winning goal, and Nikita Kucherov coming back in and just being a full staple, getting an assist from the tying goal, getting the two goals, Braden Point coming up huge. The Lightning would not have won this game if Florida would have found a chance to prevail, I personally believe, after that Owen Tibbet goal. It was Kucherov and Point show in this game, and that's what got Florida over the hump. So that's been the first edition of the NHL playoff hype. The players have been super hyped as far as every game other than one, which was the Battle of Florida, that was 5-4 with the deciding goal at the final minute. So it was almost into overtime at 18:46 is when Point won it. Every game has been hyped as far as it's either been an OT or decided at the last minute so i definitely hope that continues i hope that continues tonight as the nashville predators play their first game against the carolina hurricanes stay tuned for my series preview for that coming up as well as the st louis blues play their first game against Car colorado avalanche excuse me at 10 p.m stay tuned for my series preview on that coming up and then at 7 30 you have game two the second game 
of the Bruins and Capitals series after the Capitals were able to win on that Dow goal aforementioned in overtime. I hope you all enjoyed the first edition of NHL Playoff Hype, the reaction to the great first weekend of the NHL Playoffs. Let's have a great first full week of the NHL Playoffs now. Keep all the great action going. Enjoy all the great hockey, everybody. Please like, comment, and subscribe here at Sports Fanatic News. We appreciate your support. Keep the channel going and stay safe out there. Peace out.